Political Institutions Strong political traditions and institutions that have been in place for hundreds of years guide Britain's stable democratic regime. The monarch still rules as head of state, but the prime minister and the cabinet form the policy-making center. The system is parliamentary, which means that the prime minister and cabinet ministers are actually members of the legislature. In this section, we will explore the parts of the British political system and ways that they interact to make policy. Linkage institutions. Linkage institutions play a very important role in British government and politics. Political parties, interest groups, and print and electronic media have long connected the government to British citizens. The British government's policy-making activities are complex, and its linkage institutions are well-developed. Political parties. Britain's political parties began to form in the 18th century, and their organization and function have shaped the development of many other party systems, including the United States, through the years. At first, they were simply caucuses, or meetings of people from the same area of like mind. Only in the 19th century did a two-party system emerge with roots in the electorate. The labels Whig and Tory first appeared under Charles II, with the Tories supporting the king and the Whigs opposing. Both were derisive names. Whigs were Scottish bandits, Tories Irish bandits. The Whigs eventually became the Liberal Party, and the Tories, still a nickname today, the Conservatives. The Labour Party emerged in the early 20th century in response to new voter demands created by the Industrial Revolution. Today, the two major political parties are Labour and Conservative, but several other significant parties rep are represented in Parliament. Historically, Britain has had strong third parties that significantly affect election results. For example, in the 1980s, the Liberal Democratic Alliance Party garnered as much as 26% of the popular vote. But because of Britain's single-member plurality election system, one member per district who only has to get more votes than anyone else, not a majority, it never claimed more than 62 seats in the House of Commons. The House of Commons is dominated by the two largest parties, but three or four-way elections for MPs are usual. The 2010 parliamentary elections resulted in an unusual but not unprecedented hung parliament, in which no party gained a majority and a coalition government formed. The Conservative Party recaptured the majority in the 2015 elections, winning 330 seats. The Labour Party The largest party on the left is the Labour Party. It controlled the British government between 1997, when Tony Blair became Prime Minister, and 2010, when Labour ceded power to a coalition government. The party began in 1906 as an alliance of trade unions and socialist groups that were strengthened by the expansion of rights for the working class during the 19th century. Traditionally, labor unions have provided most party funds, although Blair loosened the union ties and sought to broaden the base of party membership. The early history of the party was defined partially by the controversial Clause 4 that called for nationalization of the commanding heights of British industry. The growing moderation of the party was reflected by the removal of the clause from the Labour Party constitution in the early 1990s. The shift in policies toward the centre became apparent shortly after Neil Kinnock became the party leader in the early 1980s, and has continued under leaders John Smith, 1993-1994, Tony Blair, 1994-2007, Gordon Brown, 2007-2010, and Ed Miliband, 2010-2015. After Labour's serious losses in 2015, Miliband resigned, and many predict that the new leader, Jeremy Corbyn, may reverse the party's move toward moderation. Labour's 1992 loss in an election that they were widely predicted to win almost certainly was a turning point in its development. Its failure to capture the majority led to the resignation of Neil Kinnock as party leader and the appointment of John Smith, a moderate Scotsman who the party hoped would solidify the support from the Scottish nationalist groups. Smith died suddenly in 1994 and was replaced by Tony Blair, a young leader who did not come from union ranks. Instead, he was an Oxford-educated barrister turned politician who hoped to bring more intellectuals and middle-class people into the party. Labour won the elections of 1997, 2001, and 2005, and tried to redefine itself as a moderate party with support from many different types of voters.
Even though the party won the 2005 election, its margin of victory was much smaller than before, contributing to Blair's resignation as party leader in 2007. Labour's prospects for the future continued to fall after Britons in the local elections across England in June 2009 gave the party only 23% of the vote, its worst showing ever, and well behind the opposition Conservatives' 38%. In the elections for the European Parliament on the same day, Labour won less than 16% of the vote. Labour lost the election of 2010, and Gordon Brown resigned, leaving the party leadership to Ed Miliband, whose political preferences were left of centre. As the coalition government formed between the Conservatives and Liberal Democrats, the Labour Party was left to struggle to regain voter support. The party's losses in the election of 2015 reinforced its waning influence. The Conservative Party The Conservative Party dominated British politics between World War II and 1997, holding the majority in Parliament for all but 16 years during that period. The Conservative Party is the main party on the right, but it has prospered partly because it traditionally has been a pragmatic rather than an ideological party. Although the party supported a market-controlled economy, privatization, and fewer social welfare programs during the 1980s under the leadership of Margaret Thatcher, the Conservatives moved back toward the center under Prime Minister John Major, 1990-1997. The party is characterized by noblesse oblige, and its power is centered in London. The organization of the party is usually viewed as elitist, with the MPs choosing the party leadership. No formal rules for choosing their leader existed until recently, but now the leadership must submit to annual leadership elections. This new process proved to be problematic for Margaret Thatcher in 1990, when she was challenged strongly in the election and virtually forced to resign. After Labour seized control of the government in 1997, the Conservative Party was weakened by deep divisions between two groups. The traditional wing, One Nation Tories, values noblesse oblige and wants the country ruled by an elite that takes everybody's interests into account before making decisions. This wing generally supports Britain's membership in the European Union. The Thatcherite wing, a strict conservative, wants to roll back government controls and move to a full free market. The members of this wing are often referred to as Eurosceptics because they see the EU's move toward European integration as a threat to British sovereignty. The current party leader and prime minister is David Cameron, who won the position in December 2005. Cameron's youth and debating ability, as well as Tony Blair's vulnerability as Labour leader, revived the Conservative Party's hopes of recapturing the majority. During 2006 and early 2007, the party established a lead in opinion polls, but with Blair's resignation and the rise of Gordon Brown to the Prime Minister's post, Labour regained its lead in major polls during the summer of 2007. However, with Brown's growing unpopularity during 2008, the Conservatives again gained support and were well positioned for the election in 2010. Cameron has generally been more of a one-nation Tory, and at first he distanced himself from the Thatcherite wing. But by 2009, his words were more conciliatory as he hoped to unite his party for victory in the election of 2010. When his party won a plurality but not a majority of seats, Cameron became prime minister of a coalition government formed with the Liberal Democrats, with Nick Clegg, the Liberal Democratic leader, serving as deputy prime minister. The party regained its majority in 2015, extending Cameron's leadership for another few years. The Liberal Democrats Two parties, the Liberals and the Social Democrats, formed an alliance in the 1983 and 1987 elections and formally merged in 1989, establishing the Liberal Democratic Party. The goal is to establish a strong party in the middle as a compromise to the politics of the two major parties. Thatcher's extremely conservative leadership, and Labour's leftist views and strategies. The party won an impressive 26% of the votes in 1983, but because of the single-member district plurality voting system, in Britain it only won 23 seats, 3.5%. Liberal Democrats have campaigned for proportional representation, which would give them an equal percentage of the MP seats, and for a Bill of Rights modeled after the first 10 amendments of the U.S. Constitution. The party strength declined in the early 1990s as both the Conservative and Labour parties moved to the centre of political opinion, and in the 1992 election the party picked up only about 17% of the total votes cast. 
The party held on, though, partly due to the popularity of its leader, Patty Ashdown, and to some strong stands on the environment, health, and education. Ashdown retired in 1999 and was replaced by a Scottish MP, Charles Kennedy, and the Liberal Democrats picked up seven seats in the 2001 election. The party also benefited from public disillusionment with the Blair government's support for the war in Iraq when it picked up 11 more MPs in the election of 2005. In December 2007, party leadership passed to Nick Clegg, who criticized a labor, go labor government for its erosion of individual civil liberties, a stand that the party has long supported. However, the party still remains tremendously underrepresented in Parliament, considering their relative popularity at the polls. After the 2005 elections, the Liberal Democrats had 62 MPs out of 646, even though they won more than 22% of the vote. In 2010, the party won 23% of the vote, but only managed to capture 57 seats in the House of Commons. However, since no major party won a majority, the Conservative leader, David Cameron, invited the Liberal Democrats to help form a coalition government, and Nick Clegg became Deputy Prime Minister. The formation of the coalition was controversial among longtime supporters of the party, with some criticizing Clegg for supporting the center-right policies of the Conservative Party. The coalition showed signs of stress since the two parties took increasingly different positions on issues such as Britain's role in Europe, with Liberal Democrats generally being more supportive of the EU and on reform of Britain's unelected upper house of parliament. The Liberal Democrats' poor showing in the election of 2015 forced Clegg's resignation, leaving the party seriously weakened. Other Parties Britain has many smaller parties, including nationalist groups in Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland. Played Camry in Wales and the Scottish National Party in Scotland both won seats in the House of Commons during the 1970s, and they have managed to virtually shut down the Conservative Party out of elections in their region since the late 1990s. The party's fortunes were strengthened after Labour's return to power in 1997, when the Blair leadership created regional assemblies for Scotland and Wales. However, Labour has been strong in the two regions, and the two parties combined won only nine seats in the House of Commons in 2010. The Scottish National Party surged in popularity in 2015, winning 56 of Scotland's 59 seats in the Commons, largely at the expense of the Labour Party. The Plaid Camry currently has 11 of 60 seats in the Welsh Assembly, and the Scottish National Party has 64 of 129 seats in the Scottish Parliament. Northern Ireland has always been dominated by regional parties, including Sinn Féin, the political arm of the IRA, and the Democratic Unionist Party, led by Protestant clergymen. Together, they captured 12 parliamentary seats in 2015. Two parties on the far right benefited from the growing criticism of the Labour government before the 2010 election. The British National Party and the UK Independence Party. The British National Party formed in 1982, but has never been represented in Parliament. Historically, the BNP has been overtly anti-Semitic, but in recent years it has focused on ousting Muslims from Britain. During the 2010 general election, the BNP received 1.9% of the vote and failed to win any seats. All three mainstream political parties in the UK openly condemned the BNP. The UK Independence Party has focused more on its opposition to British membership in the European Union. In the 2009 European elections, the BNP won two seats in the European Parliament, representing the first time that the party ever won in a national poll. The UKIP, which had previously held 12 seats in the European Parliament, picked up an extra seat, giving it a total of 13, finally settling to 11 due to defections, which tied the number of seats that the Labour Party won. In the 2010 UK general election, the party polled 3.1% of the vote, up from 0.9%, despite being the fourth largest party in terms of vote share. UKIP failed to join win any seats. In 2015, the party only won one seat in Parliament, but it picked up 12.6% of the vote, reflecting its growing popularity. Elections the only national officials that British voters select are members of Parliament. The Prime Minister is not elected as Prime Minister, but as an MP from a single electoral district, averaging about 65,000 registered voters. Elections must be held every five years, but traditionally, the Prime Minister could call them earlier. 
Officially, elections occur after the crown dissolves parliament, but that always happens because the prime minister requests it. The power to call elections has always been very important because the prime minister, as head of the majority party, always calls them when she or he thinks that the majority party has the best chance of winning. The Fixed Term Parliaments Act of 2011 altered these traditions by introducing fixed term elections to parliament. Under the provisions of the Act, parliamentary elections must be held every five years, beginning in 2015. Fixed term parliaments were the general elections ordinarily take place in accordance with a schedule set far in advance, were part of the conservative liberal democratic coalition agreement that was produced after the 2010 general election. The Act limits the Prime Minister's power to call elections, except in the case of a vote of no confidence. An early election also might be called if two-thirds of the MPs vote to do so. The Plurality Electoral System As in the United States, British parliamentary elections are a winner-take-all, with no runoff elections. Within this single-member plurality system, each party selects a candidate to run for each district post although minor parties don't always run candidates in all districts. The person that wins the most votes gets a position, even if she or he does not receive the majority of votes in the district. The British nickname for this system is the first past the post, like a horse race. Since MPs do not have to live in the districts that they represent, each party decides who runs in each district. So party leaders run from the safe districts where the party almost always wins. Political neophytes are selected to run in districts that a party knows it will lose. They are usually happy to just make a good showing by receiving more votes than the party usually gets. The winner-take-all system often exaggerates the size of victory of the largest party and reduces the influence of minor parties. This system is the main reason that the Liberal Democrats have not been able to get a good representation in Parliament. Regional parties tend to fare better. For example, the Scottish National Parliament generally has a good chance of picking up districts in Scotland, as it did in 2015. However, Parliament still remains a two-party show, even though many other parties may get a sizable number of votes. For example, in the election of 2005, the Labour Party received 35.3% of the vote, not a majority, but they received 356 out of the 646 seats, i.e. a majority. Likewise, in 2015, UKIP won 12.6% of the vote, but only won one seat in Parliament. In 2010, Liberal Democrats garnered 23% of the popular vote, but won only 57 of the 650 seats in the House of Commons. This situation inspired Nick Clegg, the Liberal Democrat leader and Deputy Prime Minister, to call for a referendum in May 2011 on an alternate vote, AV, which would have allowed voters to rank candidates on the ballot in order of preference. If after a first round no candidate had more than 50% of the votes cast, the votes of the least popular candidate would be redistributed following the second preference indicated by supporters of that eliminated candidate. Rounds of redistribution continue until someone crosses the 50% line. Along with the Liberal Democrats, the Labour leader Ed Miliband supported the AV, but Conservatives and many Labour MPs opposed it. The referendum went down to decisive defeat, so national elections in Britain continue to follow the first-past-the-post model. The election of 2015 reflected a strong surge in the popularity of the Scottish National Party, which kept their 56 seats in the House of Commons. The feat eclipsed the Liberal Democratic Party's eight seats, so that the SNP gained a larger presence in Parliament, especially as articulated by Nicola Sturgeon, the party's leader. Elections for Regional Governments Some signs of change in the electoral system have emerged in very recent years. For example, in the Good Friday Agreement of April 1998, Britain agreed to give Northern Ireland a regional government in which all parties would be represented on a proportional basis. In other words, the religion-based parties would each have a percentage of representatives that matched percentage of the total vote each received. According to later agreements with Scotland and Wales, their regional parliaments are also are based on proportional representation. As a result, both bodies have often not had a clear majority party. However, the largest party in the Welsh Assembly after the election of 2011 was Labour, with 30 of 60 seats. In the Welsh Assembly, the Plaid Camry won 11 seats, and the Conservatives won 14. After the Scottish election of 2011, the Scottish National Party had 68 of 129 total members, with Labour at 37 and Conservatives at 15. 
Other changes have occurred on the local level, with the mayor of London now elected directly for the first time ever. European Parliament Elections Britain participates in the elections to the European Parliament, which is the directly elected parliamentary institution of the European Union. The elections are held every five years by people of the EU's member states. In 2014, 73 members were elected from Britain using proportional representation, with 19 seats going to Conservative, 24 to the UK Independence Party, and 20 to Labour. No, most notable was the drop in support for Conservative Party candidates, with the UK Independence Party actually garnering more votes than any other party. The Scottish Nationalists won two seats, and the Liberal Democrats secured only one seat. Campaign Financing British campaigns for public office are much shorter and less expensive than those in the United States. However, in 2006, both major political parties were under police investigation for campaign financing. The two areas of investigation were the use of peerages, seats in the House of Lords, and the disclosure of non-commercial loans. In the first, parties were investigated for breaking a Parliamentary Act of 1925 that prohibited the offering of peerages in return for money. Secondly, parties were suspected of breaking a 2000 law which requires parties to disclose the benefits they derive from personal loans. In question were secret loans from wealthy well-wishers. The investigation increased the pressure on Tony Blair to step down as Labour leader. Interest Groups like most other advanced democracies, Britain has well-established interest groups that demonstrate interest group pluralism, with relatively autonomous groups competing with one another for influence and policymaking. British politics are also characterized by neocorporatism, in which interest groups take the lead and sometimes dominate the state. Perhaps the greatest influence of British interest groups come through quangos, quasi-autonomous non-governmental organizations, or policy advisory boards appointed by the government. Using a neo-corporatist model, quangos, together with government officials, develop public policy working in different policy areas. Some simply advise on policy, while others deliver public services. Quangos weakened while Margaret Thatcher was prime minister, and their numbers have declined even more during recent years. In recent years, a number of quangos have been abolished under conservative plans to reduce the overall budget deficit. However, about a thousand still remain. Not surprisingly, the most influential interest groups have been those linked to class and industrial interests. Between 1945 and 1979, business interests and trade unions fiercely competed for influence over the policymaking process. The powerful Trade Unions Congress, TUC, which represents a coalition of unions, had a great deal of clout because the government often consulted them on important decisions. While no comparable single group represents business interests, they too had an open door to inner government circles. For example, in 1976, Chancellor of the Exchequer Dennis Healy negotiated with TUC and the Confederation of Business Industries CBI, to limit TUC's wage demands in exchange for a 3% reduction in income tax rates. All of this changed when Margaret Thatcher took control in 1979. Thatcher wanted to reduce the power of interest groups in general, and she slammed the door shut on TUC. As labor unions lost public support, they also lost political sway, and the Labor Party loosened its ties to unions and began to broaden its voter base. Since Thatcher left in 1990, interest groups have regained power, but the government has partnered not only with unions, but with businesses as well. The Role of the Media not surprisingly, British newspapers reflect social class divisions. They are sharply divided between quality news and comment that appeals to the middle and upper classes, and mass circulation tabloids that carry sensational news. Radio and television came to life during the collective consensus era, so originally they were monopolized by the British Broadcasting Corporation, the BBC. The BBC sought to educate citizens, and it was usually respectful of government officials. Commercial television was introduced in the 1950s, and now there are five stations that compete as well as cable. A variety of radio stations also exist. Despite the competition from private companies, the government strictly regulates the BBC and the commercial stations. For example, no advertisements may be sold to politicians, parties, or political causes. BBC and Government Relations the BBC had a significant clash with the Blair government in 2003 over support for the war in Iraq. 
BBC supporter Andrew Gilligan wrote that the government statement that Iraqi forces could deploy weapons of mass destruction within 45 minutes was based on false intelligence that officials knew was unreliable. The conflict grew into a crisis when weapons inspector Michael Kelly, the alleged source of the false intelligence, committed suicide. Tony Blair appointed appeals judge Lord Hutton to investigate the death, and the judge ended the crisis when he exonerated the Blair government in early 2004 and criticized the BBC for its reporting. The report prompted the chairman of the BBC Board of Governors to resign, an action that signaled an almost unprecedented embarrassment for the network. Despite this disagreement, the Labour government continued to support the BBC with a license fee levied on any household in Britain with a television that receives broadcasts. This fee has allowed the BBC to maintain its large presence on television and the internet and to support BBC Worldwide, the corporation's commercial arm. The Conservatives have been critical of raising the license fee, and they have advocated for a more transparent BBC, with full audits and expenditures published online. Media Scandal of 2011 An investigation into phone hacking practices of major British tabloids led to the closing of one of Rupert Murdoch's most influential newspapers, The News of the World, in the summer of 2011. When it was discovered that the paper's employees hacked the cell phone of a murdered 13-year-old, the scandal snowballed as it became apparent that phone hacking was a common practice among the tabloids. Even though David Cameron called for an investigation, his own credibility was questioned since his former media chief, Andy Coulson, who had been an editor for the Murdoch paper, was questioned and arrested by the police. The scandal escalated to include London's Metropolitan Police, who were charged with failing for years to fully investigate phone hacking at News of the World. The scandal brought the relationship between the government and the media into question. As revelations unfolded of political favoritism and coziness between the media moguls and elected officials, as well as the tabloids' harassment and manipulation of government officials. For example, the New York Times reported in July 10, 2011, an incident in which a Labour member of Parliament criticized a son for its features of topless women that appeared regularly on page 3 by saying, I'd like to take the pornography out of our press. The paper responded with the headline, Fat, Jealous Claire Brands, Page 3 Porn, accompanied by a photograph of the MP's head over the body of a topless woman. Press regulation clearly came to the fore as an issue for the Cameron coalition government.